Okay, so we're going to have a look at a really curious pair of solids here. So on the left-hand side, we've got a bowl shape, and this is formed by taking a cylinder and then cutting out half of a sphere from inside it. So you've got your cylinder, and you cut out the sphere, and then you're left with this nice bowl shape on the left. And then on the right-hand side, we've got a cone. And both of these shapes have the same height, but not only that, they've also got the same radius for this circular face at the bottom. Now, these two shapes, you can show that they've got the same volume, but not only that, if you also, if you imagine you take a horizontal cut through them using this, this plane like in this diagram here, no matter what height you choose for this, you'll have the same volume for the top two pieces. So the little top piece above the plane and the bowl here has the same volume as the top piece of this cone. And the bottom two pieces will have the same volume as well. And you can see here in this animation that each of these shapes have the same volume at each stage. So we'll do the calculations to convince you of that later on. But even more interesting, not only do they have the same volume, the same volume at each height, but they also have the same surface area. So when we make this cut here, the cross-sectional surface area at that height is the same for each of these shapes as well. And you can visualize that here where we take the cut at different heights. So the cross-sectional area for the bowl shape, this is always equal to the cross-sectional area for the cone shape. We'll prove that as well at the end of the video. We'll do the calculations. Now, things get really interesting here as H gets smaller and smaller. So on the left-hand side, you can see the bowl as this shrinks down. As H gets smaller, you're left with a circle, whereas the cone, the shrinks and shrinks, and all you're left with is a point. And this is really interesting because back in the 1600s, just before calculus appeared, Galileo was thinking about infinity and infinitesimals and came up with this problem as a sort of paradox. And you might be tempted to say that because the top part of the bowl and the top part of the cone have the same volume, they contain the same number of points. And this is true at each stage as h gets smaller and smaller. Then as h goes to zero, you see you're left with, at each step you've had the same number of points in the bowl and the same number of points with the cone. But then you're left with a circle versus a point. So we're saying that a circle contains the same number of points as this single point at the top of the cone which certainly can't be true. This is like we've proven that infinity equals 1. I'll leave you to think about this a bit, but it's not quite as simple as saying two things have the same area with the same volume, therefore they contain the same number of points. We have to be really careful about how we think about this when we've got infinitely many points. Does that even make sense? So now let's move on. We'll do the calculations just to show that you do indeed get the same volume and the same surface area wherever you take this cut. So for the cone, if we start with the volume of this upper little cone here, height h, you can see that this upper cone is just a scaled down version of the larger cone, so the ratio between the height and radius of this cone stays the same. So here, because the height and the radius are equal, the radius of this little cone is just going to be h. This is really nice because now, to calculate the volume, you just use the formula. So the volume is a third pi times the radius squared, which is h squared multiplied by the height, which is h. So this gives us a third pi h cubed for our volume. And then the surface area, this one's actually even easier because it's just the area of this little circle here with radius h. So the surface area, this is just pi h squared. So to find the volume of the bowl, what we'll do is because we're looking for a volume, a small bit here, which is basically formed by taking the cylinder and then removing part of the sphere, the volume of this upper section of the bowl is just the volume contribution from the cylinder minus the volume from the sphere. And the volume of the cylinder, this is easy to work out for this top bit. This is just pi r squared times h. And then for the sphere, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of take the bit of sphere here, we'll use some calculus to work this out, and flip it over, and then we'll write this actually as an integral between 0 and h of the cross-sectional area a of z with respect to this variable z. So we're saying, let's go take out the bit of sphere here, flip it over, then we get this kind of picture, the cross-sectional area, this blue area is az, integrate the cross-sectional area at height z, respect to z, and then 
this will give us the area and the volume of the sphere. So now what's nice about how I've flipped this over is if you imagine we've got some axes now, so an x-axis going this way, a z-axis going up, and a y-axis going into the board, then the equation of our sphere here is x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals r squared. And then if you want to try and find the area at height z, you could perhaps consider what happens when y is 0 and then try and find the x-coordinates. So when y is 0, at this point here, your x-coordinate is going to be the radius along here, and then you can do pi r squared to find the cross-sectional area. So we can rearrange here to find x. When y is 0, you get x equals the square root of r squared minus z squared. So then a of z, this cross-sectional area at height z, this is just pi times x squared which is pi into r squared minus z squared. Great, so then we can substitute that in here, the integral minus pi r squared minus z squared dz. And because we've got this pi r squared term here, we're integrating this over a re interval of length h. This just gives us pi r squared h. So these two terms cancel leaving us with a really simple integral to calculate, the integral between 0 and h of pi z squared dz. So this gives us pi z cubed over 3 between h and naught, which gives us a third pi h cubed as our volume, which is exactly the same as what we had for the cone. And now we'll do the same sort of calculation for the surface area. So if you remember for the surface area, of this sort of slice in the bowl here, we've basically got this annulus kind of shape and we're interested in this shaded area here. So the surface area, just like we've done with the volume, this is the surface area from the cylinder minus the surface area from the sphere, the hemisphere. Now the surface area from the cylinder at this height is just going to be pi r squared. And then the surface area coming from the sphere, so that's basically this blue height, but remember we're at height h. So what we're really looking for here is actually this area here at height h. So remember that the cross-sectional area at height z is pi r squared minus z squared. So that tells you that your cross-sectional area at height h has to be pi to r squared minus h squared. We've got an h in place of the z there. And this is nice, we get some more cancellation, this term cancels this, and we find that our surface area is pi h squared, just like we had once again for the cone.